Hey, welcome to Device Owl. Welcome back. In the previous episode, we talked about how to get started with a melody that you sing and then record on your device. Now, be aware that there are many alternative ways to write music. For example, you can be at your instrument playing chords and so getting inspiration for a melody, and that's fine. The advantage of my module is that you can create a melody every time and everywhere because you're not depending on your instrument. And you can be inspired by everything, a movie that you saw, a memory that you recall, your girlfriend's eyes, and so on. Okay, for today we will learn how to identify the key of your melody. Why is this important? Well, knowing the key helps you to play chords that go well with your melody. But why are chords important? Let's go right on and hear the difference. With chords, you get a much richer sound and a stronger sense of rhythm, the magic thing that gets people dancing. To identify the key requires the following, identifying the notes in your melody and knowing the notes in every key. So play your instrument, use a music app or ask a friend to help you identify the notes you were recording. They might not be on the exact accurate pitches, just take what is the most predominant sound, closer to the right note. There are three cases. The happy one is when your melody contains all seven diatonic notes, let's say C, D, E, F, G, A, B, then the key is either C major or it could very well be A minor. So how do you make the difference? Well, you could be aware of your feelings when you sing. Does it sound happy or sad? Happy, the key is probably major. Sad, it's probably minor. However, the deciding factor is the final note. For a tune in A minor, according to the music books, the melody should ideally end on the note A. Let's hear an example. Let's now list the notes in every key. I will put them in the description as well. In the second case, your melody contains less than seven notes, let's say G, A, B, D, E, F sharp. So you can either be in G major slash E minor or D major slash B minor. Again, look at the last note. Let's take an example in E minor. The third case, your melody contains more than seven notes or is with sharps or flats where they shouldn't be. Remember that short, quick notes are maybe passing tones. So let's take an example from the classics. You see that E flat is a passing tone. The key is actually A minor. Finally, just remember your last melody note might not actually be the required one, which is defined by the note your melody tends to resolve to, tends to go to, the point where it feels like reaching home. Let's take our example in A minor and don't end on the note A. Just notice how unsettled, unfinished the melody feels like. For the moment, don't worry if you will not feel this home note. You will for sure develop the ear for it as time goes by. Cool. In the next episode, we will talk about transposing. It's super important for getting the most out of your song. Thanks for watching. Please go ahead and subscribe and check out my channel to understand music like never before. The Wise Owl salutes you.